So in this video, I want to talk about the immunosuppressants and focus on the drugs that we use to prevent organ transplant rejection. So the two deadliest allogenic responses after getting a transplant are antibody-mediated hyperacute responses to either the ABO blood group mismatch or to a foreign HLA allele that the person had exposure to. We can take care of that by doing an ABO blood group cross-matching and HLA cross-matching. The next thing that we need to worry about, and that's what we can deal with drugs, are T-cell responses. And before we put in all the drugs that prevent T-cell activation from happening, we should be very clear about how our T-cells activated. So once a T cell recognizes with a T cell receptor the peptide MHC complex, and further CD4 gives kind of the extra hug, CD3 is activated and starts activating the T cell and also starts energy. Then we're going to have signal 2, which is the so-called co-stimulatory signal, and there's an interaction between B7 and CD28. And this now keeps activating the T-cell and stops energy. The combined signals, 1 and 2, are going to lead to the secretion of IL-2, and then IL-2 can act in an autocrine fashion on the IL-2 receptor to thrive proliferation. During proliferation, other signal 3 cytokines are going to produce from the antigen-presenting cell. The type of cytokine is dependent which invader was originally detected by the antigen presenting cell. If there's a lot of interferon gamma production, it's going to thrive for Th1 response. If there's IL-4 production, it's going to thrive for Th2 response. If there's TGF beta and IL-6 production, it's going to thrive for Th17 response. And if there's only TGF beta without any other pro-inflammatory cytokines, there's going to be a T regulatory cell response. So how can we stop T-cell responses in the setting of an organ transplant? Well, one mechanism is just to decrease T-cell activation. Another mechanism is just to deplete the T-cells and just kill them. And then there's several miscellaneous drugs that do other things. So I want to start with talking about the drugs that decrease the T-cell activation. So we have two drugs which work very similarly, that's cyclosporin and tacrolimus. And what they do is they inhibit calcineurin. So once there's CD3 activation within the signal 1, there's an increased calcium influx. Calcium is going to bind to calmodulin, and those are going to activate calcineurin, which is a phosphatase. And as the name already implies, a phosphatase is going to cut off this phosphate from NFAT. NFAT is a transcription factor. Once it's activated, it's dephosphorylated, it can go into the nucleus and can thrive the production of IL-2 and other cytokines. So now cyclosporin and tacrolimus, they can inhibit this phosphatase, calcineurin, so there cannot be any dephosphorylation, and so NFAT cannot be activated, and therefore there's decreased production of IL-2, and then as a consequence also decreased T-cell proliferation. So another drug that we could use is belatacept, and this is particularly inhibiting the signal 2. Remember, signal 2 is um, the interaction between B7 and CD28. So belatacept is actually a CTLA-4 fusion protein. So it's kind of a pretend CTLA-4, and CTLA-4 has a very high affinity for B7, and it basically competes with CD28 for the interaction with B7, and therefore CD28 cannot bind to it anymore. We're not going to have a signal 2, and therefore decrease T cell activation. Remember that CTLA4 is found on T cells and normally provides negative feedback to decrease T cell activation. Another way to inhibit T cell activation is just to use an IL2 receptor antibody that acts as an antagonist at the IL-2 receptor. So these are two monoclonal antibodies against one chain of the IL-2 receptor, basiliximab and daclizumab. 
the Xmap tells you it's a chimeric antibody and the Umap is a fully humanized antibody. So if you're going to block the IL-2 receptor, there is no proliferation signal possible. And so kind of signal 1, signal 2, which results in the production of IL-2 and then the proliferation of the T-cell via the IL-2 receptor is going to be blocked. The fourth way to block T-cell activation is just downstream of IL-2 signaling. There is mTOR, and mTOR is going to be responsible for the production of cyclins, which are going to thrive the cell into cell cycle. So there are two drugs, sirolimus and everolimus, which inhibit a downstream signaling molecule of the IL-2 receptor and therefore also decrease the proliferation of the T-cells. So another way to prevent the T cells are going to react in an organ transplant is just to deplete the T cells. That's a very straightforward strategy, and we have two drugs that do so. That's muromonab, a CD3 antibody, and then just generally polyclonal antisera against T lymphocytes. That's this antithymocyte globulin. So those antibodies tag the T cell, the CD3 antibody obviously binds to the CD3, and the antithymocyte globulin binds to several surface molecules on the T lymphocyte. And then remember, the antibody can also have the function of giving the kiss of death, which is basically just tagging it for destruction. We have several ways how an antibody can mediate destruction, one being ADCC, antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, which is conferred by the NK cell, and that's what I've drawn here. So remember, the NK cell is going to recognize antibodies via the FC gamma receptor. It's a CD16 molecule, and this can then activate the NK cell to kill the target cell. Besides the NK cell, we also can get complement-dependent cytotoxicity and certainly also this antibody molecule can serve as an opsonin and therefore the phagocytes, which also have FC gamma receptors on its surface, can take care of it. Other drugs that are going to dampen the immune response after receiving an organ transplant are glucocorticoids, which I have abbreviated here with GC. They act at the nuclear receptor, so the target is inside the nucleus at the DNA, and what they do is decrease several cytokines and also increase apoptotic genes so that they're going to thrive the T-cell apoptosis. And because you can produce less cytokines, they're also going to decrease T-cell activation. The last drug that I want to mention is azathioprine. It's just generally decreasing proliferation of cells because it inhibits purine synthesis and therefore there's less DNA synthesis and therefore less activation of the cell cycle and less proliferation of the cell. This concludes the video on the immunosuppressants used in organ transplants.